You know, it's funny how women often like to be compared to flowers. They like to say things like, oh, I'm a, a, a dandelion or a rose or some shit like that. And I believe it's us men who are naive to the fact that flowers, true flowers, roses, uh, dragon lilies, whatever the hell they're called, um, origami flowers, I think that's the type of flower, um, they need wilderness to bloom. They have to endure hardships. They have to endure lack of water. And they have to endure pain to be a flower, for a flower to bloom, for a flower to grow and exist. There are flowers that only grow in the desert, and supposedly they're the most beautiful flowers on this earth, right? There are flowers that grow in cities, in random places. And these flowers, they have to have unimaginable hardships to grow. I think they said the only type of flower that doesn't grow in nature is a blue flower. It's completely artificial. And if you think about it, the women of today are blue flowers. They are completely artificial. They're not found in nature. They're man-made. They construct themselves with their makeup, with their push-up bras and their lack of exercise and horrible diets. And they condition themselves with pills that cause extreme fat burning and fat loss. And then they they either um, go and get their stomachs uh, stapled or uh, they have this thing called liposuction. where They have all the fat literally sucked out of their asses and then they redistribute it in other places to try to make themselves look more feminine. But that's nothing. That's to be expected. The reality of the situation is far more dangerous than that. Because most women, they'll never tell you this. They'll very rarely admit to it. But they enjoy causing mischief. More importantly, they enjoy causing pain. They get off on it, a lot of women. They just get orgasmic delight from inflicting catastrophic amounts of pain. Especially on us men, because they know we can't fight back. You can judge a psychopath or someone who's psychotic by how they choose their victims. And more often than not, those types of people pick victims that can't defend themselves. The system that we live in is set up to stop a man from protecting himself. It's set up to stop you from doing what comes natural your natural default nature as a man which is whoop a motherfucker's head in which is to just straight take a pipe or a bat or my personal favorite just shoot them uh and just stop you from doing that you know it want they want to stop you from acting accordingly around evil entities if you're around evil you're naturally going to get a little bit angry. You're going to feel on edge. You're not going to be comfortable. And if you think I'm joking, you think that's a lie. No one can go to sleep with a mosquito in the room. If there's a mosquito in the room and you are aware of it, you're not going to be asleep in that room because you know that mosquito is somewhere watching you waiting to attack. And you won't be able to sleep. You'll be tormented until you find it and kill it. Or you get it out of the room. The reality is... We're dealing... With very dangerous people. These women... A lot of them... The joy they get from destroying a man's life... The joy they get from destroying men's lives... The fact that... There's so many more women than there are men, and yet you still have women out here that have five and six different baby daddies, and each one of them is paying child support between two and three hundred dollars a month, basically giving this chick 
you know, a, a working wage that she doesn't have to work for. All she had to do was just, you know, bend over and, you know, guzzle some some man juice. And there you go. You know, 10 months later, you got a child. And I say 10 months because uh, if you do your research, your true research, conception is instantaneously. Uh, it's even biblically like that. Even in the Bible, Book of Remembrance, the Most High says it is 10 months. Oh, all I'm saying is we've been conditioned to think a certain way. We've been conditioned to believe that women are flowers and flowers aren't dangerous. However, you look at a flower, a flower that grows in nature, more often than not, it'll have some pretty crazy thorns on it that will stab the shit out of you at just the slightest touch. And women, they fuck up your world, man. They mess it up to the point where you can't go to sleep at night because you're up stressed about all the money you owe, all the bills and the random desire that she may have to go out and waste more of your money, more of your energy, more of your time and put you in a position where you have to pick up an extra shift when you'd rather just go home and go to sleep. She put you in a position where you have to, uh, as opposed to taking that uh, vacation time and cashing it in for money and then just, you know, being able to save a little bit or, you know, invest or do something else, anything you want to do, like buy something you want, she'll make it so that money has to go to bills. Like things that you don't want, buying her stupid shit that she doesn't even need, that she probably doesn't want. Most women even admit to the fact that all the clothes that they have, they only wear them once and then they get rid of them. So it makes you wonder what the fuck are they even doing? You know, if 80% of chicks are out here purchasing, you know, all of the items, all the buyers predominantly are women, it is goddamn ridiculous. You know, we are basically surrounded by imposters. And the second you turn your back, the second you start doing your tasks, they're going to show up and they're going to fuck you up because that's what they do every day, all day. And I have friends and I have family that are married and confused. And, you know, they ask me questions like, hey, when are you going to get married? Why don't you go ahead and get married? I'm like, why do I do I look like I need to? to suffer to you? Do I look like I need to live a life of torment? No, I don't. A lot of times people see me and I just look too damn happy. I look like I'm just on cloud nine and it's because I'm not suffering. And if you're listening to this and you're in a position where, you know, you don't owe anybody any money Say you don't have to get up and go to work unless you want to, unless that's what you choose to do. If you can live comfortably without even doing that, hey, I say do that. Because I think that in this shitty world that we live in, the wisest man, the wisest, he does only what's necessary. Nothing more, nothing less. All these people out here prepping, trying to get ready to survive in the post-apocalyptic world that they believe is coming. Hey, if you want to waste your energy entertaining that bullshit, go ahead. And if you don't want to waste your energy entertaining that bullshit, then don't. I mean, don't. I would say no matter what the situation is, there's no need. There's no reason to overthink anything. If you just think about, I'm going to give you this example and I'm in this video. If you think about the whole supposed pandemic that we're in, right? If you don't watch TV, if you don't listen to the radio and you just look outside, I mean, you're not going to really see anything weird other than some stupid motherfuckers walking around, you know, with masks on. You know, they look like they're probably going to rob a store or some shit. 
I mean, that's about it. And that's that's the reality of the situation, man. These people, they have created things that... I mean, this shit doesn't exist. You know? They got people out here acting a damn fool for no fucking reason. Because people love to entertain nonsense. And all I'm saying is... More often than not, people pick the nonsense that they're entertained by. Don't pick stupid shit. I would say don't pick anything that doesn't benefit you. If you want to believe that zombies are coming, which maybe they are. Hell, some of the technology they have and the way some people act. I mean, that's not that hard to believe. And if you decide that you want to live a life that prepares for that particular scenario, go ahead. But it has to be what you're choosing. You know, that's how you you get wrapped up. In, in other people's bullshit, specifically whatever woman you're dating's bullshit, and you stop living for yourself and you start living for her. And that's when you see all these guys showing up with gray hair and and they start going bald and, you know, they can't think right. They can't even hold a proper conversation with you. You know, they look like they've been fucking mutilated mentally, like mentally castrated, like somebody literally took a knife cut off in their skull and started taking out pieces of their brain and that's how they act like they're demurred they lack intellect because they've given it to a woman I say know who's really dangerous to you in society there are dangers in society and you would be wise to know them the greatest danger to you is probably that chick that works in the store or that chick that is homeless on the street or that chick that, you know, every time you go to work, you know, she's always inviting and warm and she's just giving you signals to ask her out. That chick that is in class next to you, you know, a lot of times they're the most dangerous threats because they can get closer to you than anybody else. So watch out because, you know, it's a world of imposters. Peace.